Well, this is Derek here on Coffee with Derek, coming from Madison Ave Studios in Wego, New York. Podcast is coming to you in episodes and series. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and podcasts. Please like, share, and subscribe however you're watching. Um, just to recap, we're going into we're in July, episode six. We uh, just talked about my uh, recent bid to uh, a healthier lifestyle. And then uh, we covered some of my uh, whys and dove a little bit into how I keep motivated. But uh, this episode, we're going to talk more, talk a little bit about um, something that's true and true and near to my heart, and doing volunteering work and uh, why it's important. So grab your coffee, however you're listening, and uh, let's do this. So volunteering. So I, I wanted to talk about this today, middle of July, summer's on, and, uh, you know, it's been coming up a lot. I, uh, 20, 22 years I volunteered pretty heavy in my community. Um, due to my recent injury, I had to take a back seat and step away from something I was passionate about for years and years and years. But uh, I started volunteering when I was 16 years old. Actually, did some volunteer work before then, but for the for the majority of it, I started volunteering. Uh, Sixteen, joined the fire company in the town I lived in, um, back in Orangeburg, and uh, my dad was a fireman, and I came from a long, long lineage of volunteer firemen. My grandfather, great grandfather, uncles, dad, um, everybody. They were all all volunteer firemen at some stage of their life and for a long time, long periods of time. So, you know, I just felt it was what to do. So I grew up around the firehouse. I think my dad joined when I was probably about four years old and he went up through the ranks, eventually made chief officer. And, uh, I joined shortly thereafter. He was chief a couple of years and he actually started to go back up through the ranks, um, doing being a volunteer. So the first three years of my volunteer career, I was in my first fire station. Um, you know, I lived about a mile from the station. Did a lot of stuff. You know, it's a lot of time commitment. You know, like anything else, you get out what you put in. Um, I went to all the trainings I could. I was pretty active. Went to as many calls as I could go to. And... Uh, you know, I met a met a long, long list of people and um, just a ton, ton, tons, tons of, of value add. I'll put it that way. Um, then I moved. Nineteen ninety six, I moved to across town. Uh, ended up joining another fire company. I only lived about half a mile from that station. I was there for about seven years. 96, 2002, uh, I was an officer there, made it up to a chauffeur officer, which is basically a driver, um, was on the line officer, did some other stuff, but I was pretty active. Uh, I did actually win an award for 66% of all activities one year. I think that was like, uh, I think it was year 2000. So I was pretty active, you know, being a kid, probably going through college, Hanging out, always at the firehouse. Again, has some uh, long-lasting relationships come out of there too. Guys, I still talk to. Guys, I still hang out with. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to see one of the guy, two of the guys probably that I used to be a fireman with 20 years ago um, up at the lake this summer. So, you know, you reach out and you guys do do things still. It's pretty cool. 1997. Um, when I was a member of Excelsior, uh, a couple of guys from the fire company were members of the ambulance corps and the ambulance corps needed volunteers. So at that time they were kind of just looking for drivers. 
So me and a couple other guys said, yeah, sure, why not? We can come down and drive, help out. And, uh, you know, you got to have a heart for that kind of stuff. You got to just be willing to lay it all out there and, you know, all hours of the day, all days of the week and all weeks of the year. You know, when you're volunteer fire EMS, you know, never ends. And, uh, you know, you just got to be, you got to have the right heart and the right mindset to do those kind of things. But um, I wouldn't give it up for the world for anything that I did all the time away from the family, all the time away from friends that weren't in the fire company, which most of them were, kind of just works out that way. So 2002, I move up here, upstate New York, end up joining my third fire company, um, where I'm now a life member of, but I did uh, 12 years there. And uh, again, you know, the value add, the guys, the relationships, you know, so many to talk about, so many I could do an entire podcast on some of the personalities around the fire company. Um, but again, the whole point is volunteering, um, and volunteer for church safety team since 2012, uh, volunteer for relay for life, raising money for, uh, cancer awareness and cancer research the last couple of years, uh, just endless, endless amounts of rewards. You know, most people don't volunteer when you volunteer, you're not really doing it for yourself. You're doing it for other people. And, uh, you know, what I, what I really wanted to talk about today was just, just volunteering and community involvement. Um, I've noticed over the last few years, really probably the last decade, just the, the, you know, people are so busy. The, the need for volunteering is, is just as much as it was, if not more, because there's more people, uh, than it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. Never seemed like when I first joined the firehouse, and we're only talking 1993, and we had more volunteers than we knew what to do with, and we still didn't have enough. You know, like, we had a ton of guys, really active, ready to go, but we just never had enough. And we had a lot, but we just never had enough. You always need volunteers. And I'm only talking from the fire EMS aspect. I'm not even talking the, uh, the aspect of anything else. I'm just talking fire EMS right now. Um, these guys, the volunteer firemen in the country are on the decline. EMS, more, more and more emergency medical, and I say EMS, emergency medical services, uh, ambulance, paramedics, um, emergency medical technicians, however, whatever it is in your area. Um, the volunteers are just dwindling, and they're having to pay more and more of these people to do the same job. And I'm not taking anything away from the paid people because it, it's it's a balance for sure, you know. I mean, it'd be nice to have career staff in every town and every fire station ready to go, ready to answer the call, but it's just not that way. So, you know, volunteering, it's huge. Um, the church, church safety team, you know, volunteers. I mean, let's face facts. Our pastor was talking about this weekend. You know, there's – very few people on staff and our volunteers are, are what makes the church go around. And it's mo it's like that for anything. If we didn't volunteer for the relay, you know, relay for life this year, our team, Maria's militia, um, we're just shy of like raising $9,000, just our team since, uh, I think, you know, we'll, we'll just say for the first, since the first of this year. So that's $9,000. that's going to go to the relay for life, cancer research. So if we didn't do that, um, you know, that money wouldn't have been raised and it's, and we're just one small piece of a bigger picture. You know, there's relays and there's, there's teams and there's, there's people all over the country doing this. Um, we're just one, one aspect of it. So <clears throat> I guess, you know, really what I'm trying to say is just volunteering, um, fire EMS. I, I know that's not for everybody. It's not really w what the point of this is. It's just something I did. And I, I do it for the church. I do it for the, for the relay. Um, but we're always looking for volunteers. You know, uh, New York State started a thing a couple years ago. Uh, they do a open house across the state, same day. It's a Saturday from 12 to 4, trying to, re, you know, to, to drum up some business, as I say, to get some volunteers. 
Um, you know, the, your local churches, I'm sure everybody has volunteer teams at your church. Uh, the relays, there's all sorts of benefits out there that are looking for volunteers. Um, Red Cross, March of Dimes, you know, wh- whatever your flavor is, they're always looking for volunteers. Um, your local Rotary Club, there's Lions Club, Knights of Columbus, Elks, uh, and even when you dive into a lot of those, they're all kind of doing the same thing, just maybe with a, a different spin to it. So what I realized recently, um, started doing an outreach program, well, starting to do outreach programs with our church. Um, there's places like Mom's House in Johnson City. They have volunteers. And then they wouldn't be able to function and help single moms if they didn't have the volunteers there to back up what they do. So it's it's huge. Um, I talked to some guys from the Rotary Club, the local Rotary Clubs recently, And they're always looking for volunteers, always looking for people to help, you know, freshen up the community. And, uh, you know, like I said, what I've noticed over the last decade or so, the community involvement that we have in our neighborhoods is is on the decline big time. Uh, A couple weeks ago, I was talking about on Facebook about, you know, do you know your neighbors? Like, I'm guilty. I don't know all my neighbors on my street. I don't even have that many, but I don't really know them. I know a handful of people. So, uh, you know, I put my money where my mouth is and I started a Facebook group and started inviting the people I knew and, uh, that lived on my street. Next thing you know, I knew seven. Now I know 14 and now we're going to have a, we're going to have a get together. We're going to have a party because they're like, wow, there's people out on our street. I always wonder who that was on the corner or I was wondering who lived in the big white house, you know? So now, now we're going to have a, a cookout and a, uh, and a fire one night over the summer and get everybody together. So, um, you know, that's just one, one aspect of community involvement, one aspect of volunteering. Um, another thing that came up recently that really was disturbing. Now I'm not going to get into political. This is not what this is about, but every American has the right to vote. And recently, well, I shouldn't say every, but you get the right to vote, sign up when you're 18, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So we recently had a, a local vote here and here where I live, and uh, you know the turnout for votes on a local level are really, really dis like they're disheartening. Really, that people don't even care enough about what's going on in their backyard to turn out to vote for something, but then they'll be all over social media complaining about it. And you know, like I don't think people realize that. You, you know, all that stuff is, is uh, it's all public knowledge. So we may not know how you vote, but we know that you did vote. So, or you didn't vote for that matter. <clears throat> so we just recently had a thing for, you know, a local fire company. And there was like, I don't know, under, under 400 or 500 people that voted. I don't even remember the numbers. But we, we, we have a, a town of almost 30,000 people. I'm, I, I don't know the numbers. I could find them out, but... 30,000 people live in my town, less than 500, I believe, showed up to vote on a, on a project that, that could, could alter maybe the tax base. I'm not a hundred percent sure what it's going to go. I mean, but the fire company gets tax money, tax money gets spent on fire equipment. So, you know, it's tax money, but you know, this could be like the next 30 years could, it could, could, could be spent on the project that they went for. And it's like nobody even cares. I mean, good, the project passed, whatever. But, um, you know, it's just uh, disheartening when you find out that, I mean, even me, I'm, I, I have nothing to do with the fire company anymore. I went down and voted. Uh, you know, I went for the school votes. I go to, you know, anything that, that I can go and voice my opinion. Do I always agree with what they're doing? No, but I go and voice my opinion. Um, feel like I do my due diligence for the town. And uh, I get out and vote. I get out and vote and all the met major elections and I go out and vote for the small stuff. Um, but again, getting involved in your community is huge. One way, easy way, sometimes the most rewarding way is to volunteer. Um, telling you right now, like my fire company, we have four stations, probably got close to 150 volunteers and, uh, it's never enough. You always need more. Um, the ambulance corps, I know 
in town. They they do a combination of like paid and volunteer, but you can always use volunteers. And that again, that's just the emergency services side. I know I have friends that are in the Elks Club and they're always doing stuff to raise money for this or that or cancer benefits or you know when they gotta raise money for somebody that had a fire or you know, somebody's really sick and in the hospital fighting cancer or, you know, something stupid as, you know, guy broke his hand and you know, he's out of work for six months and, you know, he's the m- main proprietor. You know, they raise money for that stuff and it's all volunteers that are doing that work. So I would encourage anybody that's listening, if you don't volunteer at some level, look into it. Even even if it's something that's on your heart or something that you do or something that you're good at, I'm sure whatever you're good at or whatever you do, there's an organization in your town that could use your abilities, whatever it could be. Whether you're a great at computer or you can build something or you're a financial guy, I mean, you never know. You never, never know what somebody could use. I mean, we have a whole ton of different volunteers and we have different levels you know even in the fire service you have interior firefighters you have guys that can drive you got guys that can direct traffic you got guys that can do the website you got guys that can enter um information into a computer you know you got guys that can run the meeting you got guys that can cook uh you got guys that can train so there's different levels of 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 involvement you know you don't have to necessarily be an interior firefighter to help volunteer. Same with the ambulance. You can drive, you can train, you can help rig maintenance or clean stuff or whatever. You know, I mean, I don't know whatever, what the needs are, but you know, if you don't ask, you don't know. Um, I mean, just at our church, the level of volunteers that we have is ridiculous. I mean, we have guys that can park cars. We have people that are reaching out to other people, praying for other people, taking care of the kids, teaching kids, uh, Helping out in the office, helping out with the sound system, you know, playing on the worship team. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff to do, tons of stuff. So if your heart's being out there and you're being led to do something or, you're, you know, if you have some free time, look into it. The Rotary Club does a ton of things. The, the, the last two guys we talked to here in town, you know, they need people just to help, you know, maintain certain intersections that are run by the town that the town just doesn't have any time and money to do it. So they do it, you know, they, they go out and raise money for different various, uh, things. They do chicken barbecues and they do a whole bunch of different stuff. They go out and try and promote small businesses. You know, they do websites, they do commercials, they do, you know, fundraising events and all kinds of different stuff. Um, I know here locally we have a big, uh, golf outing and they actually man some of the tents there. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but they do have volunteers to help park people and do all sorts of stuff. Um, I know the Elks club, my friend does a lot of that stuff and they do a lot of things for the wounded warriors and the veterans. That's a lot of what like the Elks club does. Knights of Columbus, same thing. Um, I'm not sure what the lions club, but I know they work hand in hand with the rotary and those guys, So, um, even your local senior citizens, uh, center, you know, the senior center is always looking for volunteers. Um, you know, police departments, a lot of police departments have, uh, auxiliary, um, members and those are all volunteers. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a ton of things out there. If you look hard enough, you'll find them. And, uh, I I can't even begin to, to describe to you, not even the level of satisfaction, but, you know, personal satisfaction from volunteering, but just the people I've met over the years. Like, I wouldn't even be sitting here if it wasn't for, you know, like me getting into the fire company, meeting a bunch of guys from church, going to church, meeting the other guys from church. You know, it's like a big snowball. And, you know, all through my volunteer fireman, if I didn't volunteer when I was 16, I wouldn't have volunteered when I came up here. My life would look totally different. Um, And that's just one aspect. So, you know, there's multiple, multiple, multiple things to do. But whatever you're involved in, if you're, if you're passionate about it and you love it enough, or you can do something that you know somebody else can't, um, you know, step up and say something, try and help them out. 
and see see what you can do because there's volunteers needed everywhere you know so don't don't be ashamed and don't be afraid to to raise your hand and say hey I can do this or do that and uh you know maybe it might not be what you see inside of yourself it might be what somebody else sees inside of you that you don't even know about yet um which is kind of what I've been learning recently you know I never you know you don't always think you always think that you can do something, but then other people see something inside of you that you don't even see yet. And then it opens up a whole nother, uh, avenue of opportunities. So again, I encourage you, challenge you, however you want to look at it, get out and volunteer, do something, do something in the community, find your, find your wheelhouse. And, you know, even if it's an hour a week or half an hour or, <laughs> Like some of the volunteers, you know, firemen, 20, 30, 40 hours a week, you know, whatever you want to give, it's still better than nothing. And get involved with your community, you know, keep, keep an eye on what's going on. I mean, what your, what your town, what your, what your local town board is doing will directly affect you faster than what the president and Senate and the other guys are doing. You know, what they do may, may not even trickle down to you, but I'm telling you now, most of what the town does or your village or whatever could have almost instantaneous impact on you. So it just always baffles my mind how many people just really don't know what's going on in their own backyard. And I'm guilty of it sometimes because I just don't want to know. But when you don't know and you know, you're not paying attention, then you can't complain about it, right? And we still will, but shouldn't. So get out there, do some volunteer work. Find something to do. Uh, and if you don't know what to do or you don't know how to volunteer, go to the town. Go to your village. Go to the Rotary Club. Call them. They're, most of the Rotary Clubs have websites. And even those guys will say, oh, you can do that? Hey, XYZ was looking for help. They'll know. They'll, those are the people that, as we say, have the boots on the ground. They're the, they're the people in your community that are, you know, they, they get their finger on the pulse. They know what's going on. They know what the, the community needs. And they'll be able to point you in the right direction. You know, if it's the firehouse, police, you know, if that's really where your, your wheelhouse is, you know, reach out to them. Find out, hey, I can do this. Maybe they got a spot for you. Maybe, you know, things are ever evolving. You never know. Something that they may not have needed uh, six months to a year, ten years ago, they might need now. Um, so, encourage you to get out and volunteer. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you guys soon.